the FNCS qualifiers are over, and 15 teams from both EU and NA East have punched their ticket through to the finals. Let's take a look at some of the trends of their success. Every match starts with jumping out of the battle bus and choosing your drop spot. Ideally, you don't want to be fighting any opposing teams off spawn, as it takes time and expends resources, which makes it more difficult to have good loot for the endgame. Out of 30 teams that have already qualified to the finals across EU and NA East, 22 of those teams have landed at drop spots that were uncontested. The only team to win their qualifier while being contested was Pink and Anas in EU Qualifier 3, whose main success off spawn was because they had infinitely better drops than the opposing team, meaning they always got the weapon first. This was the case for every game outside of Game 5, where some hesitation in the drop caused Pink to veer away from the floor spawn, ultimately losing them the game off spawn. Yes, having a drop spot uncontested is a trend we often see in teams performing well on the leaderboards. However, in the FNCS semifinals, winning a game will shortcut you straight to the finals. Across the three qualifiers, 36% of the games were won by a contested team. Sure, this isn't a majority of them, and the teams who were left alone in their drop spot did win more matches. But, when all that matters is winning a game, fighting off spawn isn't the worst case scenario. Take Hycris and Vortex, they were contested at Reality Falls in Qualifier 1. After winning off spawn and running through a lot of other teams after that, they managed to win game number 1. Now, the rest of the tournament didn't go their way, meaning they placed 23rd overall. Yet, this showed they were absolutely capable of winning a match in semifinals and qualifying for the finals. The talk of the season has been all about the grapple gloves. They are the only form of mobility that players can use in endgame. This item allows for a change of playstyle where players can grapple to the front side of zone, spray backwards at players rotating, and then repeat. So they're definitely worth fighting for off spawn. But are they really? 15 out of 30 qualified teams use the grapple gloves as part of their game plan. Now, there are obviously more teams in the lobby looking to use them, which often led to top teams underperforming. The battle for the Greasy Grove Grapple Gloves on EU has been eventful. You see, these three teams all want the grappler spawn at Fungi Farm. And since there's only three spawn locations and a minimum of four people, a fight always ensues. These three teams have been fighting back and forth in different variations throughout the three qualifiers, and none of them have been able to string together six clean games with enough points to earn a top five. Sure, the reward is the grapple gloves, but the risk comes in the form of a zero point match. Of course, you can't just avoid fights the entire match and expect to do well. So, when are the top teams looking to take engagements? Well, in Qualifier 1, 20% of the Elims from the top 5 teams occurred within the first 4 zones. That value rose to 24.5% in Qualifier 2, and then to 25.2% in Qualifier 3. In Game 2 of Qualifier 1, Kanata and Aegis wait until the 4th to 5th zone to take their first engagement, cleaning up 2 players and refreshing their materials before the end game. Had they taken the site earlier when they had more materials, the reward wouldn't have been worth the risk. But because they waited until later in the game just before the moving zones, they got exactly what they needed. This timing is something we've repeatedly seen across all regions and qualifiers. Now, with 15 teams on every region already punching their tickets through to the FNTS Finals, expect similar trends in the semifinals this weekend. Until next time, we'll see you on the Battle Bus. Beep, beep! beep.